I'm just gonna take you guys through the next few days of us getting settled in Denver. It's definitely the biggest REI in the world. Trying my first flies class in Denver. Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel if you're new around here. My name is Hannah, if you're not new, welcome back. If you watched, or if you just finished watching the road trip vlog and the explanation of like Denver and everything like that, you will know that I filmed that intro today because I'm wearing the exact same outfit, but I decided that I wanted to film like the intro for that vlog, that video after we did the road trip because I kind of just like needed to get all my thoughts in order on how I wanted to explain the Denver situation how I wanted to explain the New York situation, the Virginia situation. Like I just really needed to like wrap my head around it and figure out what exactly I wanted to say. So I did wait to film that intro and I just filmed the intro today. So hopefully, well, if not hopefully, it definitely will be up before this vlog because this is the first official Denver vlog. I'm just gonna take you guys through the next few days of us getting settled in Denver. I am trying not to like jump into a full on routine or like put any pressure on jumping into a full on routine just yet so i'll kind of explain the situation and how things are working now you guys know that we got here yesterday when i'm filming this vlog it's yesterday and it took us four days to get here because of a midwest blizzard which was insane never want to drive through that ever again in my entire life so we didn't get here till yesterday when we were supposed to get here the day before that so i feel like yesterday was a day where we were just trying to like get our bearings get ourselves situated we unpacked in the airbnb away clothes i'm doing a ton of laundry today because we had a ton of laundry to do put suitcases away like kind of figured out our living space situation and today i am working and then after work we're gonna kind of like go out and explore the area so we're just trying to get our bearings these next few days and like figure out what our new routine is gonna look like for a little bit the area that we're staying in, work routines, workout routines, food, meals, everyday life, like you guys get the gist. So that is kind of like what this vlog is gonna be. It's just gonna be a like welcome to Denver, getting settled in type a video. Um, we are staying in an Airbnb. I did mention that in my last video. I also mentioned that I'm not going to be sharing any of the Airbnb details because obviously safety reasons. I just don't want to say where we're staying. I think that's self-explanatory. So I will share the specific Airbnb details like once we leave Denver, but until then I'm just not going to share and I won't be sharing like where we're staying specifically. That's that i have like so many things i want to talk to you guys about so i hope you guys enjoy like a very chatty intro because i'm just like trying to get my thoughts in order and i'm a little bit all over the place i have a lot of things on my mind that i haven't been able to talk about for the last couple of months while we were trying to figure this out but now i feel like i can just word vomit so i am working here obviously i still have my job but i'm gonna be working east coast hours so i'm gonna be working from 7 a.m to 3 p.m which i actually really really am looking forward to doing that this morning we got up at like 6 30 opened up my laptop at 6 45 logged into work it is 10 a.m here it is noon on the east coast and i technically now get off of work at 3 p.m and i just really like that setup i would honestly rather get up early in the morning and then get off earlier in the day than work nine to five here i just feel like it's gonna allow me like so much opportunity to do things after work you guys know that if you work a nine to five job once you get off at 5 p.m like you are exhausted you have your set routine and you don't have time for like a ton of things after work but i feel like getting off two hours earlier in the day is going to kind of give me a new motivation to do things. I can do workout classes earlier. I can catch up on YouTube stuff. I can do social media stuff. I can explore the city. I can hang out with John. It's also interesting because I'm like not a morning person whatsoever and I am the type of person that absolutely rolls out of bed 15 minutes before my workday starts and then has a slow start to the morning instead of having a whole morning routine and then start working i kind of like do my morning routine in the morning while i'm working i kind of like juggle both of them so i feel like that's going to be a little bit of an adjustment because i am not a morning person but i'm gonna have to be a morning person if i'm working 7 a.m to 3 p.m so that's that today was fine today i had no issue with getting up when i did I opened up the curtains and let the sunlight in. I'm so excited to get into a new routine. I didn't really have much of a routine when I was home the past two weeks because 
of the work situation and just like so many people being in the house and not really having a set place to work so i'm very excited to start this new routine of getting up getting after it just finding like my new norm i'm also super excited to find new workout classes here and try new coffee shops new restaurants i have like a whole list in my notion which i want to do a notion tour in this video because i have not talked about my 2024 resolutions and i took a little break from vlogging i guess in the new year i just like didn't vlog the last week that i was in virginia so the first vlog that you guys will be seeing of the new year is the road trip vlog and then this vlog is kind of like my reset vlog in a way almost like i'm doing things a little bit backwards but like also that's just the norm on this channel if you're you've been around for a minute I just do things how I feel like I want to do them and I don't really follow a social norm so <laughs> that's that but I want to do a notion tour review 2024 goals with you guys talk about like things that I'm excited for in Denver but we can do that all a little bit later I just wanted to intro this video say welcome back to the channel I hope you guys are so excited for all the Denver content I have so many things that I want to film like I'm feeling so 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 inspired here already it's crazy how switching up your environment and your location just changes your mindset on a lot of things and also just feels like a revamp or like a reset on not life because that's so dramatic but it just feels like a much needed reset so I'm just like feeling super inspired content wise I'm feeling super inspired work wise I'm feeling just excited about a lot of things in general and I'm so excited to take you guys along with so hope you guys are excited for all the Denver content the Colorado content and things coming in 2024 you're along for the ride honestly you'll be learning things as I learn things because we are just flying by the seat of our pants with a little bit of structure and a little bit of planning but we are flying by the seat of our pants just a little bit. I'm not gonna do like a full Airbnb tour to be honest because there is not much to see to the Airbnb because it's pretty small but look how cute our kitchen is. I'm obsessed with this kitchen. I just love the white with the chrome. It's all updated appliances and overall just like a really great setup. It had pretty much like everything that we needed. We did bring a few things and that's also something I want to talk about in this vlog or maybe like at the end of this experience, like things that I regret bringing, things that I wish I would have brought, things that were in the Airbnb, but I feel like I need to kind of get self in and like use everything before I talk about like what I wish I had done, what I would do differently, things of that sort. But I just wanted to give like a little kitchen sneak peek because I think it's so cute. Also the lighting in here is just phenomenal. We have big windows that has sunlight coming in on us throughout the day and it's really nice also if you're wondering where john is he's working in like one of the community spaces in our building that we're staying in they have like a few community spaces and we just decided that we would go for like a smaller apartment that has more amenities because we can work from the other amenities i'm trying to find like all the best vlogging spots for my camera so we're trying this one out today um, but I, it's funny because I'm saying that as two people that never used the amenities in our old building. But honestly, our amenities were just like not that great. So we're trying to figure out like a new norm and new like routine of working here. But I think that we are going to try to use the amenities in this building a little bit more in regards to working. Like swapping off on who works in the common areas, who works in the apartment, and things of that sort. Look who it is. Oh, what Welcome back. It feels like semi-illegal to be off of work at 3 p.m. because I just feel like, I mean, I know I've been working since 7 a.m. and I know that it is technically 5 p.m. on the East Coast, but it just feels kind of weird. It's like definitely something that we have to get used to, but it's four o'clock now and we're getting ready to go out and explore for a little bit. I want to get like a good feel for the area that we're in and also just like explore other parts of Denver. When I was looking up class pass and like workouts that I want to do, and coffee shops that i want to visit there's like one specific area in denver that i feel like has a bunch of pilates classes and solid core classes that i want to try it's called like the low high district or like the low high area so i'm making john come with me because i don't want to walk there by myself the first time just because i don't know the area that well i think we're gonna walk over to the low high area get a feel for it and then we're gonna also go to rei because he needs to get fitted for ski boots so that is currently the plan for this evening i really wish that i could show you guys like the view out of our window without giving away like where we're staying because it's actually stunning and i feel so lucky to get to wake up to this view every day and like see it throughout the day as like we're working and stuff insane that we went from a new york city like skyline view to now being able to see denver the mountains 
the sun. I mean, the sky is blue here in the winter. What a concept. my first several meetings today also i slept on my hair like kind of wet last night and this bump is driving me nuts but i just don't want to put heat on it to fix it so we're rolling with it i got done with my first several meetings of the day and it's literally only 8 44 i'm so far still loving the east coast hours in mountain time because i just feel like i'm gonna be able to get so much more stuff done during the day and also it just feels good to like wake up and get moving and everything of that sort. So that's what I've been up to this morning. Getting ready to make some breakfast. I'm gonna make an English muffin. I'm normally not someone that eats like very, very early in the morning, but I feel like now that I'm getting up at 6.30, I have to eat or else I just like am gonna starve. It's also just not good for you. That's what we're doing currently. Oh, I don't think I talked to the camera last night, like after we went to REI. So I think I mentioned that we were supposed to walk over to REI and Solid Core and like all the places that I wanted to see. And I kid you not, like three minutes into our walk, we turned our butts right back around and came back to the parking garage to pick up the car because it was so cold and so windy that it was like unbearable like it was painful so we ended up driving and i'm honestly kind of glad that we ended up driving because we were at rei for like t over two hours i think it was like two hours and ten minutes or something we were only going to go for like 30 minutes to get john fitted for some ski boots but little did we know one this rei was absolutely massive and two i think the rei in denver like specializes in fitting ski boots so there was a really long line for the ski boot fitting and then by the time that he got sat down to get the ski boots fitted to his feet um it was like another 30 45 minutes of like figuring out which ones worked best for him so we were there for a really long time and we didn't end up leaving until like 6 30 i think we got there at 4 30 we left at 6 30 and then we went to king supers we call it king scoopers because john now has like half of that in my head he for some reason thought it was king scoopers and like that's what he's called it for the last several years that i've dated him it's just king scoopers in my head instead of king supers so if you hear me saying that i know it's wrong but i i cannot help but think it's king scoopers we went to the grocery store got a ton of groceries i didn't do a haul because by the time we got back here after we got groceries it was eight o'clock at night or maybe it was like 7 30 it was like kind of late and we just needed to immediately make dinner and then like crawl into bed after so i didn't do a grocery haul but you guys have seen all the groceries it's nothing different we just got like bread stuff for some dinners we got lunch stuff breakfast stuff some drinks things of that sort so you guys didn't really miss out on too much but I didn't vlog that much. The REI was insane. Like just circling back to that really quickly. There's no way, like when I walked in there, I was like, this is definitely the biggest REI in the world. Like this is huge. There was a rock climbing wall. There were three different levels. There were so many different sections that you could go into. There was specialists for each section. So there was like a bike section, a hiking section, a clothing section for women and men, a used clothing section, a used ski section, a ski section. I mean, anything that you could want that has to do with the outdoors is in the REI and I looked it up and apparently it's not even the biggest REI. The biggest REI is located in Seattle, Washington. But all that to say, if you guys are in Denver and you're a fan of the outdoors and you're a fan of REI, you have to check out the REI in Denver because I have never experienced a store that massive. I mean, it was just insane how large it was. So that was like a cool experience, I guess. But tonight I think that we wanna actually like get into the city to explore some more. Like last night, our night kind of got wrapped up with REI and the ski boot fitting and stuff like that. But tonight I actually have a few errands that I need to run. I wanna to go to Sephora and a few other places and they're like in downtown Denver. So we'll most likely do that after work. I mean, I get off at three, so I feel like I have 
so much time to myself after work to like go and explore and stuff so that's kind of the plan but i just wanted to say good morning i haven't had a chance to talk to the vlog yet it is very hard to not only wake up at 6 30 in the morning but then feel the motivation to talk to anyone or talk to the vlog and i'm still trying to get into like a morning routine of where i want to work in the morning how i want my work set up to be like if i want to work from the couch if i want to work from the table to be honest our like dining room table the chairs are not very comfy let me see if i can show you guys this is what we're working with and these backs are just kind of painful like they hurt and they're not very supportive so i was sitting there all day yesterday working and i'm don't think i'm vibing with it so this morning i've been working on the couch but i don't know if i'm vibing with that either because i just feel like that's not good for your back and i feel like it also is just not good for productivity like i like to have a good work life separation so i don't like to work in my bedroom i don't like to really work in my living room that often i will occasionally you guys know that but i really need to find like a good separation of work-life balance here and it's hard to do when the space is so small so we're still trying to figure that out a little bit that's the update for now i'm gonna eat this english muffin and then get back to work Hello, it's a little bit later. I don't know how I feel about this lighting in this spot, but I just kind of like this like corner of the couch. Okay, I feel like this angle might be just a little bit better. Not that you guys are gonna be focused on my face during this little segment, but I wanted to share my notion with you guys. I'm not gonna share the entire notion because I do have like personal things in here that obviously I just wanna keep to myself. I also tried to use my personal notion for my job too, and I don't think it's gonna work out, but that's in here as well. So there are some things that I'm not going to share, but I figured I could give you a tour of like things that I don't mind sharing. I kept it super, super simple. I didn't buy like a template or anything off of Etsy. I just kind of created it on my own. So it's nothing fancy like, by any means it just simple to the point only has the elements that I think that I would actually use and I created this because I wanted a place to document and like actively work on my yearly goals this year I think last year I put them in a Google Doc which kind of worked but it's not something that I'm like referencing every single day I feel like it's easier if I have everything in one place or at least everything personal in one place so like 2024 goals my budget do list content ideas like things of that sort so that's really where this idea of using notion came from I just wanted a place to be able to put everything so this is what the homepage looks like I figured I might as well start off by sharing my 2024 vision board what's on my 2024 vision board kind of reflects my 2024 goals so you'll see like a reoccurring theme here i'm not gonna walk through each picture but you guys kind of like get the gist i obviously like want to grow on youtube grow my social media i want to explore more i want to run a 5k i want to hit some reading goals i want to start journaling again i want to get back into fashion i have some goals career-wise whether it's getting a promotion or a new job i have some like encouraging quotes on here this vision board is just kind of a montage of things that i feel like would inspire me this year and also it's just very aesthetically pleasing so i really like the way that it turned out i just made it in canva which i feel like everyone's familiar with canva so i don't really need to explain that process yeah so that's my 2024 vision board and on this homepage i also have like a to-do list under this and then i also have like meal ideas and a bunch of other random things but i'm not going to share those next section that i have that i'm also not going to share because i just like don't share what i make in my corporate job there are other channels that do share that and you can reference them if you want more specific numbers but i'm just not going to share that here now but i am trying to do my monthly budget in notion to see if it works for me i was previously doing it in an excel sheet and it's just hard to like have multiple excel sheets and multiple google docs going at once if that makes any sense i feel like having it all in one place is really helpful so i've been tracking my monthly budget in here right now i feel like it's a test run of the budget in notion and it's very different from like what I was working with before. So stay tuned for the monthly budget update. Okay, next thing that we can deep dive into are my 2024 goals. And I feel like I can share all of these. So there's nothing that I would want to cover up, even if I did, whatever. Okay, starting with the personal section, I want to run a 5K this year. It's very funny because for the past like several years, every single time I would make a yearly goal list, I would put run a half marathon. Have I? 
ever run a half marathon before? No. Have I ever run a 5k before? Also no. So I'm not sure why I was like shooting for the stars when I hadn't even made like a small step to achieve any sort of running goal if that makes sense like i feel like i was just going straight for the half marathon so this year i'm making the goal a little bit more achievable by just putting like run a 5k race i feel like there are so many 5k races in any city or any place that you can just sign up for some of them are free some of them you have to pay for some of them are fun some of them are for great organizations like i feel like there's so many to choose from i've run a 5k on my own before just like around jersey city when we lived there around the water and so I know I can easily do this. I just feel like this is where I need to start. And if I run a half marathon this year, that is fantastic. But I'm not putting it on the goal list because I have yet to mark that off in any of the years that I have put that on the list. And it's been like three or four years in a row at this point. Next goal is a little bit more of a challenge, but I think that it would be something that would be fun for me to do. It'd be fun to write a first draft of a book. I feel like I have so many ideas like floating around in my head at all times i used to love writing when i was younger i actually wanted my career to be a journalist for a newspaper and i obviously am not doing that anymore but i feel like it just helps explain the fact that i do really enjoy writing and i've always enjoyed writing and i feel like writing a book is just something that i would love to achieve in this lifetime so i'm thinking for 2024 i could start writing a book and potentially finish the first draft of a book even if i don't end up like fully publishing it it's just something that i can achieve for myself and like prove to myself that's something that i could do one day you know what i mean next one is to journal at least two times per month this is something that was a little bit more personal obviously i wouldn't be sharing the journal entries it's very different from like the first draft of a book but i used to also love journaling i've had a journal by my bedside ever since I can remember and I've definitely fallen off of the journaling game but I've noticed that when I do journal it just makes me feel so much better and I also just think it's like a fun way to document your life that's not sharing it on the internet or sharing it with other people like it's just a personal way to document your life and there's so much fun to look back on next is to read 40 books my goal for 2023 was to read 50 books i well surpassed that goal i feel like this year i'm gonna focus on slowing down when it comes to reading i would binge read books last year and read like two to three to four books in a week but i feel like i wasn't like necessarily enjoying the books and i was just focused on reading them as fast as possible to mark them off so i made my reading goal a little bit lower this year just so that i can enjoy reading a little bit more if that makes sense next is to have fun with fashion again start newly fashion pass etc document on ig tiktok and youtube this is something that i've also fallen off of in 2023 i just kind of not like gave up on fashion but New York was so expensive that it was hard to justify buying clothes all the time and buying new pieces for my wardrobe all the time and I feel like now that I don't live in New York and I'm actually like saving money for once in my life or in my adult life, I can like really start to deep dive into fashion again. I actually just signed up for Fashion Pass today. So lots of hauls and fit checks and fashion content coming back to the channel in 2024 or that's the goal at the very least. Next on the list is to start volunteering more. Whether this is like in my local community and a community that I'm visiting, whether it's online, I just feel like I need to start giving back to the community more. Like I really don't do any volunteering related things to be completely transparent. And I just feel like that's something that I have a desire to do and like could easily accomplish because there are just so many ways to get back to the community and there's so many opportunities out there if you just like literally put in a google search so that's something that i want to do this year next is to take golf or tennis lessons i just like really want to learn a new sport this year and for some reason i'm called to golf or tennis lessons these are just sports that are everywhere like whether you're on vacation or you are meeting up with a colleague or you're hanging out with friends i feel like golf and tennis are like the two sports that 
most people have in common so my goal is to do one of those this year i'm not sure which one but that'll probably be more of like a summer activity okay on the travel side of things i want to visit two new cities this year i am already going to hawaii this year so honolulu is going to be checked off I would love to do Chicago because Chicago has been on my list for so long and it's just a city I've never been to. I'm not even sure why most flights to Chicago are so cheap. It's just something that I could easily achieve, but those are two cities that I have in mind. Next, I want to do a trip to Europe. We did a trip to Europe last February and we don't have any trips to Europe planned for this year, but I just also love Europe and there are so many places in Europe that I would one, want to go back to, but two, see for the first time, Mallorca being one of them. I would love to go back to Florence and do Tuscany and then there are so many cities in France that I'm also drawn to, so I'm hoping to achieve that in 2024. Finances, I actually probably could just take this off because this wasn't necessarily like a 2024 goal, it was just a to-do list item, but I just switched to a high yield savings account from a savings account that wasn't high yield. I don't know. My sister and my dad like did a deep dive into finances and they were like explaining to me why I needed this and it makes sense in my head. So now I have a high yield savings account. Next is to put $200 per month in personal savings account, which is $2,400 total for the year. This may seem like a very, very small amount of money. And I just would like to remind you guys that I came from New York City where I was not saving like as much as I should have been in the first place. A lot of my paycheck was going to rent and eating out and socializing and activities and other commitments that I had made and subscriptions and things of that sort. So while $200 per month in a personal savings account may not seem like much to some people, that is a lot to me because I wasn't able to do that before. So we're starting off small. My goal is probably to put way more than $200 per month in a savings account, but I feel like this is the most achievable option that I could actually like mark off at the end of the year for now. So we're starting with that. This is a no judgment zone when it comes to saving. Even if you're saving like $50 a month, that's better than $0 in my opinion. The lighting is getting so wonky in here. The last item on the finance side, max out Roth IRA account. I'm not gonna explain that. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. For the career side of things, I either wanna get a promotion, get a new position within my company, get a raise, or get a new job by the end of the year. I graduated with my MBA in 2023. And since I graduated with my MBA, I really haven't done much with my career to be completely honest. I feel like I just like needed to chill out on the switching jobs front, on the school front, I was just kind of like vibing with my career. And in 2024, because I now have a second degree and because I now have so much experience in the position that I'm in, I feel like I can take my career to the next level. So that's the goal for my current career. Next is to take and pass the CAPM exam. You guys know that I finished up my CAPM course in 2023, but I have yet to either sign up or take the actual CAPM exam to get my certification of associate project management. So I'm planning on doing that at some point this year. That's probably something that I should do sooner rather than later because the knowledge is already slipping from my brain, but we will get to it eventually. And then the last section is social media. I wanna hit 8K subscribers on YouTube. We're at like 5.3K now. 2023 was a very, very, very slow year for growth for me. And while that is kind of discouraging, to be honest, I have just learned to kind of like go with the flow with social media and not compare myself to others, but also just like not set unrealistic expectations when it comes to like my own social media journey. So I feel like 8K subscribers is definitely achievable this year. I hope so, fingers crossed, but I also am not gonna be disappointed if like I don't hit that because I'm very content with my channel and like I love you guys and I'm just grateful that anyone watches my content and YouTube is more of like a passion and a hobby than it is a career for me. So that's that. Want to make personal Instagram fun again, post what I want, when I want. I really am not a huge fan of Instagram to be honest. It's one of those social media platforms that I could really honestly do without. But I feel like if I changed my mindset and just made it fun and posted what I want, when I wanted and like didn't care what other people thought, I could learn to enjoy it again. So I'm gonna try to do that this year. Next is to make TikTok fun and post what I want when I want. 
very similar to Instagram, except I don't hate TikTok. I actually really enjoy TikTok and I think the content's super fun, but I do fall into the mindset of like, I feel like I'm being judged when I post on TikTok. So I just am gonna try to get out of that mindset this year. And then the last two apply to my travel TikTok and Instagram, which if you guys do not know, I have a TikTok and Instagram account called Stamp That, which is like my travel TikTok and Instagram account and it's like a fun hobby for me to share new experiences, places I've traveled, recommendations that I may have for a city, aesthetic pictures that I take, things of that sort. I would really love to like launch and fully grow that brand this year and like consistently post on both platforms and just like really take it to the next level. So far it's been like this hobby platform that I've had and I haven't really like paid much attention to it and I post kind of like whenever I want, whenever I feel like it, whenever I feel inspired, but I think it'd be fun to take it to the next level this year. So those are all the goals that I have for 2024. I feel like I can achieve most of them, if not all of them. Like I said, I tried to make my 2024 goals way more reasonable and achievable than my 2023 goals. My 2023 goals were just not it. I didn't achieve a lot of them and it was kind of discouraging at the end of the year to see that I didn't achieve a lot of them, but I also feel like I set them so high that there were like, there was a slim chance that I was gonna achieve some of them. So I wanted to make the 2024 goals like challenging, but also something that I know that I could actually achieve this year, if that makes any sense. All right, getting back into the rest of the Notion Tour because this is now a very, very long clip. We have a section for Denver things that I would like to do. I have towns I wanna to visit, mountains I wanna ski, coffee shops that I wanna to go to, bookstores, activities, restaurants, everything of that sort. I also have a section for content ideas. I'm not gonna share that because I want some of the videos for like YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that to be a surprise. Then I have my TBR list in here, books that I'm currently reading, books that I wanna read, things of that sort. I also broke it down by library so I could like actually see which books are on my TBR because I am slightly crazy like that and am a visual person. So I wanted to see them all laid out. And then the last section that I have on my Notion is my travel section, which is like US states that I wanna visit, cities I wanna visit, countries I wanna visit, things of that sort. That's pretty much it for the Notion tour. I know this was super long and like I said I wanted to keep it very simple and didn't want to pay for a template or like make it too complicated. I think that that was like my issue with Notion before creating this was that it just felt like a very intimidating platform because so many people do Notion and like make it super extra and super aesthetically pleasing and like i'm just here to tell you that notion does not need to be like that it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be and this is what works for me so we are keeping it like this and hopefully i can keep up with notion i'm sure i'll give you guys updates throughout the year on like my notion progress things that i would do differently and stuff like that but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions about Notion, let me know. I'm not a Notion expert by any means, but I hope this was helpful. If you guys have been wanting to get into Notion or if you're curious about Notion, this is just like obviously one way to set it up and one way to work with Notion. Hello, it's later on in the day. I'm trying my first Pilates class in Denver. I'm so excited. I haven't done Pilates in about a month since I moved from Jersey City because we don't really have any Pilates studios in Virginia that I like to go to and my club Pilates membership ended kind of quickly when we were in Jersey City. So this is my first Pilates class in about a month and also my first Pilates class in Denver. I'm going to Boost Pilates, I think is what it's called. This is in the Low High area. It's a very like interesting neighborhood from what I've gathered so far. I also don't know if I'm allowed to park here or not, but there is a parking lot, thankfully. I just don't know if I'm supposed to be parking here, if I'm supposed to be parking on the street, or if it's a pay for parking. I'm like really not sure what the deal is. So we're learning for the first time. There was a Boost Pilates studio that was closer to like the actual city, but they were booked up for the time that I wanted to go. I booked a 4 p.m. Pilates class and the only Pilates class that the other location had was at 3 p.m. So we're rolling with the 4 p.m. Pilates class a little bit further away from the city. But I still feel like it's gonna be good. It's performers Pilates, so it's like what I'm used to. And yeah, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I think I'm gonna go inside and get set up. I feel like I have to give them my name and like probably thought a waiver or something since I'm a new customer. I'm doing it through ClassPass, but normally when you go to a new studio at ClassPass, they make you like sign a waiver 
in person for certain studios, just like a liability form or whatever. It's also freezing here. I thought that I would be fine in just this and I'm actually regretting not wearing my heavy winter coat. So, lesson learned. Tonight has been an actual shit show. I don't even know where to start. First of all, let me review the Pilates class. I loved it, it was great. It was a little far out of the way like I was saying and there are a couple studios closer to me that I would be willing to try but overall I really liked like the flow of the class, the style of the class, the instructor was great and I really enjoyed it. It was like a combination of club Pilates and solid core in my opinion but definitely not as intense as solid core. I will definitely be going back, I really enjoyed it. On the way back from Pilates I was gonna run some errands and go to Sephora and Target and do some things but while I was driving my car, it stalled out on me, and then the check engine light came on, and I essentially just like hit a red panic button at that point, and called my dad, I called John, we took it to AutoZone, we got the check engine light tested out, and now I'm gonna have to bring my car to a dealership to get it fixed or whatever. I know next to nothing when it comes to anything car related, so, this is so far out of my comfort zone, but I guess I have to do it because my dad isn't here to help me, but I did call him and was like, please, what do I do? And he was like, you need to go to a dealership and get it serviced. If you run into a situation where your check engine like pops on, I didn't even know that AutoZone could do a free test to tell you why the check engine light's on. They have like a little monitor that they plug into your car and then they run it through their computer and it'll show you the exact error code of why that light is on. So we know what the issue is, but I obviously can't fix it until I bring it to a dealership. Also, like when we were driving it back from AutoZone, the check engine light went back off. So now I'm like, is the issue resolved? Do I need to actually fix it? Was it just a fluke? Did I just hit the red panic button for no reason? Like we just like don't really know what to do from here because we were also gonna take the car skiing this weekend. So now it's like, do we take the car skiing and risk being stranded on a mountain somewhere? What's the vibe? So I've been dealing with that all evening. It's gonna be another late night, <laughs> late dinner. It is now seven o'clock and we're just now getting around to making dinner. We also just set the fire alarm off in the apartment, which is fantastic. So tonight's been a little bit of a shit show for lack of a better phrase, and I am just ready to like take a shower, crawl into some pajamas, read my book, and chill out because I am feeling extremely overwhelmed. A night that was supposed to be productive and fun and like chill and I was gonna explore the area a little bit ended up being not what I expected. Um, and that's two nights in a row now. That happened last night and now it's happening again this night. So hopefully tomorrow night is different because I can't do three shit show nights in a row. I can only do two shit show nights in a row. The third one, three strikes, you're out. <laughs> Approximately two seconds after making that, I spilled it all over the coffee table. And tonight is officially canceled. I'm over tonight. That was like my final straw. I'm just glad that there's kind of like a little ledge to the table so it didn't go all over the carpet, but my sleepy girl mocktail is no more. Love that for me. Good morning, you guys. Happy Friday. We just got back from the mechanic shop. I had to drop my car off this morning. Um, I was able to find someone that would take it in this morning, even though the majority of shops didn't have appointments available until like Tuesday. I just explained the situation and was saying that like we were supposed to go skiing this weekend and he did me a huge favor by taking the car in. Honestly, no guarantees on getting the car back today. We might have to do a rental car for the weekend, which is very annoying, but it is what it is. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Although I will say, going to a mechanic or an auto shop or a dealership or anything regarding cars when you have next to no knowledge about vehicles is a very humbling experience because me trying to explain what I thought was wrong with my car, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> it was like, this guy definitely thinks I'm the dumbest person in the world. I could not tell the difference between like whether or not the car stalled or it just turned off or like what was going on with it. So I was just trying to explain it to the best of my abilities and I definitely ended up confusing the guy, I would say. So 
that is awesome, but I feel like he, he'll be fine. He'll figure it out. I mean, it is his job, right? That was what we were up to this morning. I am dressed and ready for the day because I had to be, so I put on jeans, a cute little top, and we're rolling with the punches. I'm hoping this guy calls me back before the end of the day because that would be lovely. I'm also just hoping it's like a minor issue and not a big issue because that is like the last thing that we need right now is a big car issue. I just wanted to say good morning. Happy Friday. I'm ready for the weekend. It's actually MLK weekend. So we have a three day weekend and we have Monday off, which is really, really nice. So we have some fun things planned this weekend. All will be in a different vlog. I'm gonna start a ski series on the channel now that we're in Colorado and we're skiing pretty much every weekend. So get excited for that. I think that it's gonna be a two coffee kind of day. It's already been such a long morning. So I'm gonna down the rest of this. Okay, we received some good news about the car. Ignore this cabinet. I'm trying to get the good lighting in the kitchen. They figured out what the issue was. Basically, like the air code that AutoZone read from the engine last night was accurate. And so that's what the mechanic is gonna have to fix today. He also said that I have to get like an oil change and something else. So luckily he's able to do that all today and I can pick up the car later this afternoon, which means that we don't have to get a rental car for the weekend. Thank goodness. Also, just like really convenient that we get it back before this evening because we had some errands that we were gonna run this evening. I'm honestly thankful that it wasn't like more of a serious problem. I know it was like such an inconvenience for this to happen and I was super whiny because I like just edited the, the clips for this vlog and I was being so whiny last night about it. But if you have car issues, you just know that it's like the most inconvenient thing in the world, especially if you don't know anything about cars because you don't know whether or not it's something that needs to be taken care of like immediately and right away or something that you can prolong fixing. I was very whiny, but I'm at the end of the day grateful that it was not a bigger issue, grateful that the person was able to squeeze me in today to fix the problem and that we are getting it completely resolved. So that's all good on the car front. I've just been working from the couch for the majority of the day. It has been a very, very, very chill day with work. I literally have one meeting on my calendar and everything else just has consisted of smaller tasks that don't need a lot of brain power, which is how I enjoy my Fridays. Minimal tasks, not a lot of brain power, next to no meetings. Like that is the perfect recipe for a perfect Friday. I'm just gonna continue to sit on the couch for the rest of the day working. Hopefully the person calls me back within the next several hours saying that my car is good to pick up so I can Uber back to the mechanic, pick it up and have it for this evening. We're going out to dinner tonight with John's sister actually. I don't think I mentioned that yet. So John's sister actually just moved here a few months ago as well. She Maybe more than a few months. She's lived here for probably about six months now so she knows the area a little bit more than us and we're going to like a little Mexican restaurant in Denver and then I think we're going to a wine bar after so they're gonna show us the area I know we've been here before but I feel like coming here as a tourist is so different than coming here as someone that's like living here also like experiencing it with people that have lived in the area longer than us I'm excited to see Denver from their perspective their point of view and also just like get recommendations from them and things of that sort so we have a fun evening plan I will actually be the night where we get to experience Denver we were supposed to do that the last two nights and you guys know how that went based on the clips from today's vlog but tonight we actually are gonna be able to like experience downtown, the nightlife, restaurants, and things of that sort. I don't know if I've showed our little bedroom yet, but we have like an alcove situation going on with not much lighting, so there's not much to see here. But this is what it looks like in case you're curious. I just got a little bit more ready than I was earlier. I put on some makeup and slicked back my hair because I just like did not enjoy how it was falling today, so. I look a little bit more put together. I think we're getting ready to go pick up the car in about 18 minutes. That's when I'm officially off of work for the day. And we have some errands that we want to run before dinner tonight. So I just wanted to get a little bit more done up pending that we're going to have to go straight from errands to dinner because I think that we have to do the errands a little bit further out, like outside of the city. So I wanted to be a little bit more put together, but not much. We're still wearing the same outfit as earlier. These are my favorite 
new jeans from Madewell. I love the way they fit. I think that they're so fun. Pockets are very unique on the front, I will have to say. But overall, I just think it's a fun little addition to the jean collection. And then you guys know the sweaters from Grey Bandit because I've worn it several times in the vlogs thus far. Great purchase, great investment because I think I've worn it so many times at this point this winter. It's like my new go-to sweater when I want to put together a comfy, cozy outfit. got back from running errands it was kind of cool to see all like the little suburban towns that are near denver that aren't necessarily in denver like we went to lakewood i think is what it was called and then one other area around us i did run to sephora because i had a gift card and i had some things that i've been wanting to try out so i figured i would do a very mini haul and by mini i mean i only got two items i am gonna try this hottie toddy heat protectant mist for when i curl and straighten my hair i never ever ever use a heat protectant spray or like heat protectant anything when i do my hair and i know that's bad for you so 2024 we're protecting our hair not that i use heat on it that often to be honest so it doesn't really like get damaged that often but still good to have on hand and then the next thing that i got is this isle of paradise set i went in for like the drunk elephant de bronzing drops and they had them but while I was sitting there, I was like kind of second guessing whether or not I should be putting those on my face because they might break out my face. And I decided that maybe I should just do like a self tanner instead. So I got this kit because they were out of the medium self tanning drops that I wanted. And this one came with the self tanning water and the face drops. I'm not a big self tanner. If you guys haven't noticed, I am a pale girly. I just embrace the paleness. I'm honestly just too lazy to do self tanner as often as people are supposed to do self tanner in the winter. It would just end up looking bad because I would not want to scrub it off and would be really bad at reapplying it. So not the biggest self tanner girly, but I did want to do something just for like my face and my neck because I feel like having some sort of color on your face is just a confidence boost to be honest and I have been feeling kind of like bland lately in regards to just like my skin, hair, looks, like the winter paleness is really hitting me. So instead of doing the bronzy drops or whatever the heck they're called from Drunk Elephant, I'm going to try to do some self tanner drops pretty regularly. I'm trying to open up this box because I want to see what the mist looks like. I've never on a body mist before. It comes with a little mitt and then it comes with not only the face drops but it comes with the self tanning water which I guess you literally just spray straight onto your skin after a shower and then rub it in. So I will keep you guys updated if I end up liking these two products. I feel like I've maybe used this before. I feel like I've used two different tanning drops before and this was maybe one of them. And I cannot remember if I liked it or not. But hopefully I did because I just repurchased it. So that's my mini Sephora haul. We're going out to dinner in about an hour and a half. It's now 5.30. And I believe we are going at like 7 o'clock to this Mexican restaurant in Denver. So I will check back in with you guys before we leave. I think I'm just going to chill on the couch and hang out and relax for a little bit before tonight. Okay. Hello you guys, it's a little bit later. I neglected to vlog like pretty much the entire night, but I feel like I owed it to you guys to give like a recap and an official outro for this vlog. We ended up going to this Mexican restaurant called El Diablo. I could be wrong, but it was really, really good and the tacos were like fantastic, so good. I would definitely go back. And then we ended up going to this wine bar called Barcelona Wine Bar in the Rhino District, I think is what it's called. And that was also really good, so two, Really good recommendations. Obviously didn't film anything there, but if you guys are in the Denver area or are visiting, would highly recommend. We're actually getting up at like 5 a.m. tomorrow morning to go skiing and it's now 11 o'clock at night and I still have to take a shower. So I need to jump in the shower, dry my hair, figure out tomorrow's situation and <laughs> hopefully get a good night's sleep because I feel like I'm about to be exhausted tomorrow. This was like not a good idea to stay out this late, but Nonetheless, it was still fun. I enjoyed seeing everyone. It was a good time, good vibe, but I just know that tomorrow was gonna be super exhausting. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the first official Denver vlog. If you did, make sure to subscribe down below because we have so many 
vlogs, videos, so much content coming to you guys soon. I have so many ideas for like the Denver area, but also like travel content, lifestyle vlogs, everyday content. Make sure to subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next vlog. Bye.